as a way to find solutions to problems in artificial intelligence. Okay, so uh, we're gonna try, we're gonna use this example all over the place. This is a map of Romania with some of the cities and then there's some routes between each of these points. Um, one way in which searching for a solution can help is to say we want to go from one of these cities to say Bucharest, which is the capital of Romania, right? And then the road might go here, 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 and there might be roads connecting these other cities. So one example would be, well, what's the best way from point A to get from point A to point B? What's the best route? For that, you would have to search how are the how how do all the routes compare, and then pick the best one, right? There would be a problem where you actually search to find a solution. Okay, or what's the, uh, for example, what would be the um, the the optimal um, path for a network connection, right? So finding routes is a common problem that is solved through searching. Now, another um, another problem that we might tackle is also, uh, uh, well, in this problem, let me define a little bit of the problem. We need an initial state, which is where are we right now? And from that initial state, we have possible actions. So for example, from this city over here, we can only go, say, to the city above it or to the city next to it or to the city below. We, we can't go, there's no direct route from here to here, for example. That might be, that might be the way the map is. So I have an initial state. Then on that state, being in Ordera, for example, there are possible actions. So go to this city, go to the other city, go to the other city. Those are possible actions. And then there's a transition model. So there is, for example, a transition model might have costs associated to going from one place to another. Okay? This, uh, these things, initial state, possible actions, and transition model, form what we call the state space which uh, is a graph. So let's try and see it, uh, and see it in, in uh, I'm sorry, let's try and see it in a graph form. So for example, this is the same map with uh, not, not all the cities mapped out, but some of the routes with the distance between one point and another in kilometers. So for example, from Oradea to Sibiu, there's 151 kilometers. Okay, and what's interesting about this is that or why uh, is that this map for example for most viewers that are not from Romania uh, they may not know it and it's like a computer the computer doesn't know he's, he's ne it's never been to Romania it doesn't know anything about the Romanian geography but what you give it so in that sense those of us who have never been to Romania are like a computer this is completely unknown to us we just have distances and locations okay and this looks a lot like a graph, right? Now the initial state, for example, could be something like in Arad. I mean, I'm just making up these instructions, right? Or this uh, way of this notation, but it could be in Arad. That's the initial state, in Arad. This is Arad, okay, right here. And then the possible actions can be uh, go to Cebu, Cebu here, go to Timisoara, down south, Go to Zerind up north, right? Those are potential actions if you're in Arad, if your state is in Arad. And the transition mo model is the one that says if I'm in Arad and if I give it the state and one action, well, what happens after that, right? In Zerind. And it cost me 75 kilometers. Okay, that's the transition model. Now, for example, in uh, the vacuum cleaner example, there's a vacuum cleaner, and it can be either on this room here or on the right room over here, and it can suck the dust or do nothing if the room is clean, right? So these are all the possible states. So the room can be on the left when the room on the left is dirty and the room on the right is clean, and then it can go. T it can either stay on the on the left all the time, or it can transition to the right. If it goes to the right, then we have dirt on the left, dirt on the right, but the vacuum cleaner is on the right. It can choose to stay on the right uh, room, or it can go back to the left room, in which case we'll have this state over here. Okay, 
Now, it might be that it decides to suck the dust from the left, right? So then we end up with a vacuum cleaner that can either stay on the left with, the, with a clean room on the left and dust on the right. We, the, this vacuum cleaner can choose to go to the right, right? So then the room on the left is clean and the room on the right is not. Um, and so on and so forth. So these are, these are all possible states that the vacuum cleaner can be in and all possible transitions. Now, if there's uh, n rooms, okay, this will have n times 2 to the n states, so it, it, can, it can grow pretty large, okay, if we represent this in the form of a graph. Sometimes we'll represent only, uh, well, this is not the only way to represent this, okay, but it usually looks like a graph, looks like a graph. Now, this, for example, is another state, okay? It's the problem of the eight queens. So how can you put eight queens on a chessboard such that no queen can eat another queen? So this is one state, is, is the position of the queens in a, in a board chess. Now, is this a goal state? Up to you to decide. Look at it. The goal would be to have every queen not able to eat each other. So this is just a state. Is it a goal state? How, in this board, in this state, is the goal of not having any queen be able to eat another queen achieved? That would mean that it's a goal state. Is this a goal state? That's for you to think about. See if a queen can eat another queen. Um, <clears throat> well, in the real world, the states are much more complex. So, for example, for the routing problem, you have traffic, you have uh, um, the, uh, the, the speed, the maximum speed, right? The, the direction of, of traffic on the streets, um, whether the route is, uh, say, concrete or not, whether it's too winding, and so on and so forth, the amount of traffic. So for the routing problem, it can get a lot more complex. So states not only have the, the one action they can go to, but they have many other conditions. Okay. Now the search pace, spaces can be huge. Uh, most notably, for example, for uh, natural language processing problems, where we try to understand uh, words. Okay. Sometimes we need to find um, whether a word uh, is the word that we expected to be there. So, for example, if a computer is asked to complete, for example, predictive test uh, text right on your phone. If you say, Old MacDonald had a, and the word that you would predict after that would be farm. But to be able to predict that word, you have to search through large amounts of text and find that farm comes after Old MacDonald had a, right? Farm comes after that most of the time. But to be able to infer that that comes after, uh, that farm comes after that most of the time, you need to know what pretty much what people say most of the time, and that's a lot of text to search through, okay? Uh, in the problem of the vacuum cleaner, just give it, you know, four more rooms, and you have a huge, huge uh, state space. Other problems, such as a traveling salesperson, which is the, the problem of going through a bunch of cities without uh, repeating any city, right? So say, go through the 50 capitals of the United States, uh, without ever going back to any of the cities, right? That, uh, that to be able to find the best route for that, that is an NP-hard problem. That means it's not easily solved in polynomial time, which means it is, the search space is huge, huge, huge. And then when you consider 2D navigation, so for example, a robot uh, rolling around a plane, like a floor, right? Versus a robot that has to move and it's uh, standing up, so it has to perhaps duck some, some obstacles that are not on the floor but are um, up higher. It's flailing its arms without hitting anything, right? It needs to consider the space, not only the flat 2D space, which is the floor, but also the whole environment. And that immediately grows the number of states uh, a lot. So let's think about how to find a solution. We can think of it, uh, for example, uh, as a tree. And in trees, what you do is you have a frontier, which is basically the, the states that 
the urine wants to in an initial state and all the all the other states that you can reach from that that would be your frontier so you can initialize the frontier with an initial state of a problem whatever that is so for example the city that you're in and then what you're going to do all the time is you're going to say, well, if the frontier is empty, you return failure, meaning you, you, you got to a node, you have not found the solution, and there's nowhere else to go. Well, <clears throat> when the frontier is not empty, you choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier, right? Remember, the frontier is initialized with the first initial state of the problem. So you choose a leaf node, from, uh, a leaf node and then remove it from the frontier. Now... If the node contains a goal state, then you found a solution. If the node does not contain a goal state, well, expand that node, uh, expand the chosen node. Okay, so we can see this um, kind of working here. The initial state is Arad, for example, for a Romanian map. Okay, the city of Arad. From the city of Arad, you can go to Sibiu, Timisoara, and Zerint. Right, so you've expanded that node. Now, so you took it from the frontier, and now the frontier is this, these three nodes. That's the frontier. Now you'll expand the first node in the frontier, because it's a Q, and it's Arad, Figaras, Oradea, and Riminku Vilcia, right? Riminku Vilcia. You've expanded this. You've added these to the frontier, so now the frontier is all of these plus these two, right? And, and, and so on and so forth. You, you keep expanding until you find the state, the city that you want to go to, okay? <clears throat> now the problem here comes comes in when you think well from CB you can go back to a rad so when you expand a rad you're gonna again go back to this expanding the whole thing this is cyclical right and that can be very expensive because you'll be visiting it forever so one way to come uh, to overcome this problem is to uh, ignore loops so for example, here we'll, we'll do the same thing, initialize the frontier with the initial state of the problem, this, in the previous case it was Arad, and we have the explored set, or the exploded set, and that will be empty. Now forever we're going to do this, if the frontier is empty, we'll return failure, meaning we did not, there's no frontier and we didn't, we didn't get to our goal. Now, uh, if it's not empty, then we'll choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. If the node contains the goal state, then return a solution. If it doesn't, then expand that expand not expand expand that node, and add the resulting nodes to the frontier, which is what we've been doing. Then add the node to the exploded set. This we haven't done, so we are keeping track of which node which nodes we have uh, exploded already. Now, if the node is not in the frontier or the exploded set, then we add the resulting nodes to the frontier. Okay, so. Um, in this case, for example, when we add CBU Timisoara, when we want to add these to the frontier, we'll test: Does Arad belong in the frontier? Is Arad in the frontier, right? Or is it in the exploded? It's not in the frontier because the frontier is Timisoara and Zerind, but it's in the exploded ones. All the great ones are the uh, are in the exploded one. Okay, and that is how we can find a solution without. Um, uh, ignoring loops, right? So we're exploring. We uh, say we think of the problem as a tree search problem. There are be uh, many uh, more sophisticated algorithms, and we'll talk about them next.